Hello and welcome to Making Sense of It All. I'm Ani Asoyan, and today we're exploring key enhancements in monetary policy modeling through the endogenous policy credibility model, endocred. We'll discuss the addition of the convex Phillips curve to reflect nonlinear inflation dynamics and dive into the critical role of central bank credibility in anchoring inflation expectations. Finally, we'll touch on the importance of asymmetric preferences in monetary policy decision making. Let's dive in. The first nonlinearity introduced into the canonical model is the convex Phillips curve, designed to capture the dark corners of the economy that Olivier Blanchard has famously warned about. These dark corners include periods of high and variable inflation or deflationary stagnation, where linear models fail to adequately represent real-world complexities. As the output gap approaches its maximum value, when the economy is operating above potential, the slope of the Phillips curve steepens. This means inflation accelerates disproportionately, driven by capacity constraints like labor shortages and production bottlenecks. Conversely, when the economy is below potential, the Phillips curve flattens, reflecting minimal inflationary pressures due to downward wage and price rigidities. Historical examples underscore the importance of understanding this dynamic. The 1970s, for instance, saw stagflation, a combination of high inflation and unemployment, due to oil shocks and monetary policy missteps. More recently, tight labor markets during the pandemic led to a surge in inflation, with economists like Summers and Blanchard warning against underestimating the risks of overheating. Similarly, the aftermath of the global financial crisis and the euro area's deflationary pressures represent a case of a low inflationary trap that aligns with the flat portion of the Phillips curve. These challenges took years to resolve, highlighting the need for proactive policy measures. Laxton, Rose, and Tambakis emphasize that failing to account for the convexity of the Phillips curve can lead to significant costs. Linear assumptions downplay the risks of overheating and deflationary pressures, potentially delaying policy responses. DeBell and Laxton further underline the critical role of monetary policy in providing a buffer zone to guard against excessive economic variability. They advocate strongly for incorporating convex Phillips curves into models to better capture the complexities of inflation dynamics and to enhance the effectiveness of monetary policy. Central bank credibility is fundamental to maintaining stable inflation expectations. It plays a crucial role in anchoring the weight given to forward-looking components in inflation expectations. In ideal conditions of perfect credibility, inflation expectations are entirely forward-looking, meaning they align with the central bank's policy goals and targets. However, in the real world, credibility is rarely perfect, requiring a backward-looking component to account for the influence of past inflation on expectations. When credibility is imperfect, two key phenomena emerge. First, inflation expectations tend to drift upwards or downwards depending on whether the economy is in a high or low inflation regime. This is captured by incorporating an inflation bias term, which reflects a premium added to expectations in such scenarios. Second, inflation persistence becomes more pronounced, meaning that past inflation plays a greater role in shaping current expectations. This persistence complicates the central bank's ability to guide expectations effectively and requires more active policy interventions to stabilize inflation. To model the evolution of credibility, we consider two distinct regimes, high inflation and low inflation. In a high inflation regime, the public perceives that inflation will settle above the central bank's target, creating skepticism about the bank's ability to achieve its goals. Conversely, in a low inflation regime, expectations are that inflation will fall below the target, often leading to deflationary pressures. Expectations are formed in two ways. Optimistic yet watchful expectations are a weighted average of previously observed inflation and the central bank's target. Skeptical expectations, on the other hand, assume that inflation will not converge to the target, but instead stabilize at a higher or lower level. Any deviation between actual inflation and these expectations creates a forecast error term. This forecast error term is key to determining the probability of entering either the high or low inflation regime. If actual inflation diverges significantly from optimistic expectations, the probability of entering a high or low inflation regime increases. Conversely, if inflation aligns more closely with the target, the forecast error decreases and the likelihood of entering these extreme regimes diminishes. The probability of being in a high or low inflation regime is calculated as the share of the forecast error under optimistic expectations 
relative to the total forecast error. Credibility, in turn, is the inverse of this probability. A higher probability of entering a high or low inflation regime implies lower credibility, while a lower probability corresponds to higher credibility. We further distinguish between two components of credibility, credibility flow and credibility stock. Credibility flow reflects short-term dynamics and is inversely related to the probability of entering extreme regimes. Credibility stock, on the other hand, evolves gradually based on its historical values. It combines past credibility levels with current flow to represent the accumulated trust the central bank has built over time. This stock of credibility feeds back into inflation expectations, influencing the weight assigned to forward-looking components. Higher credibility stock strengthens the forward-looking nature of expectations, reducing inflation persistence and anchoring expectations closer to the target. Meanwhile, the inflation premium emerging in high or low inflation regimes represents the bias in expectations when credibility is low. Importantly, only one of these regimes can dominate at any given time, reflecting either skepticism about high inflation or deflation. In summary, credibility acts as both a stabilizer and a dynamic process in monetary policy. It is built gradually through consistent actions and communication, but it can erode quickly when expectations deviate significantly from the target. Understanding and modeling this evolution is critical for central banks to effectively manage inflation and guide expectations in uncertain environments. Finally, Endocred introduces a loss function that allows monetary policymakers to express asymmetric preferences, giving different weights to overheating versus cooling the economy. For instance, the Federal Reserve may prioritize avoiding a recession over addressing moderate overheating, reflecting a higher tolerance for positive output gaps than negative ones. This approach lets policymakers decide how quickly inflation should return to target based on the relative costs of inflation deviations, output gaps, and interest rate volatility. In cases where inflation expectations are well anchored, central banks might opt for a slower path back to target to avoid unnecessary disruptions in economic activity. This nuanced understanding of preferences enables central banks to tailor their responses to the specific challenges they face, whether it's high inflation, deflationary risks, or the need to maintain employment stability. The Endocred framework introduces powerful tools to modern monetary policy. By incorporating a convex Phillips curve, it captures the non-linear relationship between inflation and economic activity. By emphasizing credibility, it provides a clearer understanding of how expectations shape inflation dynamics. And through its asymmetric loss function, it reflects the real-world preferences of policymakers. Thank you for joining me for this deep dive into Endocred's innovations. If you found this discussion insightful, please share it and subscribe for more. I'm Ani Asoyan, and this has been Making Sense of It All. Until next time.